Hey there, let's start this video with a little story, because who doesn't like little stories? Nobody. That being established, it goes like this. In 1983, a local newspaper in Turin, Michigan published a rather disturbing article. It warned about the dangers of a particular chemical nicknamed DHMO for dihydrogen monoxide. This chemical had allegedly been found in cities' water pipes and had some scary properties. Among which, fatal if inhalated and vapors causing severe burns. Not reassuring stuff. Plus, it could corrode certain metals and had been repeatedly found in tumors. Oddly enough, those claims were accurate, but also nothing to worry about. See, this article was published on April Fool's Day, and dihydrogen as in H2, and monoxide as in O, H2O, more commonly known as water. You might have already heard a similar story before, as this is only the earliest version of a hoax that has been replicated many times. For instance, in 1997, a high school student even got 43 signatures on a petition in favor of banning so-called DHMO. And before you ask, only one student correctly identified the substance. This was originally done to show how gullible people are, but to me this primarily shows how biased people are towards chemical nomenclature. And as with everything, this phenomenon has a name. Chemophobia. The aversion to or prejudice against chemicals or chemistry. The best example of this is how many people use the word chemical referring to some toxic and artificial substance, usually in a pejorative way. Yet this is a fundamental misunderstanding of chemistry, as labeling something chemical doesn't give any useful information. And the reason for that is quite simple. Everything is chemical. From the simplest organism that appeared billions of years ago to the entire human metabolism, life works practically exclusively with chemicals. And in fact, in our surrounding, matter almost always equals chemical. The misunderstanding of this quite basic fact is at the basis of irrational fear towards chemical naming. Hence the famous, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. <clears throat> Ico say sapin sapin tainoic acid? Uh, okay, let me look that up. Ico sapin tainoic acid. Wait, what? Ico sapin tainoic acid. Okay, so I guess I'll do without fish from now on. Now that being all said, there is an underlying problem here. Society has come to associate its vision of chemical with something that is unnatural and therefore dangerous. Which brings me to my next point. The appeal to nature fallacy. The appeal to nature fallacy is characterized by the following form of thought. X is natural, Y is not natural, therefore X is better than Y. This way of thinking is more and more common in society despite it making no scientific sense. Labeling something natural doesn't make it inherently good, and vice versa. Malaria and infant mortality are two very natural things. Not sure if anybody would call them good or right. Now in practice, this fallacy looks a bit like this. So it's not good for you. It's made in a laboratory, it's been altered. It's not from the earth natural, it's not from God. So, it's scary. Now let's not focus on the fact that this guy badly wants to resemble a pirate from a child book, but rather on the fact that this is a classic example of irrational fear. See, this statement was about genetically modified organisms, GMOs for short, despite the fact that GMOs are really no more likely to be dangerous than any other food. GMOs is a big subject into itself, but to summarize, genetically modifying a plant is no worse than breeding a plant, except the latter is considered natural for some totally subjective reasons. Let's all remind us of what corn used to be before humans began to breed it. 
and let's add the fact that the vast majority of studies show GMOs to be generally safe. This is only one example of how the appeal to nature can go against progress, in a very concrete way. Another problem is that pseudosciences massively take advantage of this. The recent rise of alternative medicines is a very good example. Nowadays, many people with various pathologies choose to go to naturopathic or homeopathic doctors, who are, let's be clear, absolutely not doctors. Going to nature to get safer treatments might intuitively seem like the right thing to do. But medicine should be based off evidence in medical trials, not intuition. Unfortunately, virtually no alternative medicine follow that logic. And many people with serious illnesses have died because of that. There is perhaps an obvious reason to the increasing popularity of the appeal to nature fallacy. When confronted to change, people historically have fought against what they didn't understand, whether it be progress or not. In a society growing with artificiality, it makes sense that people are drawn to what they think is natural. After all, this is where we come from. In a way, this is analogous to Newton's third law of motion. A reaction brings a reaction. Now I think our goal here is to not be misled by our obviously flawed intuition and judge things based on what they are, not based on whether they seem natural or artificial. With that being said, thanks for watching.